Here we begin our very special Darkest Dungeon playthrough. So, with the Evolution campaign, we're going to be going through and modifying things as we go. Let the opening cinematic play, and then I'll introduce you to our starting cast. You will arrive along the old road. It winds with a troubling, serpent-like suggestion through the corrupted countryside. Leading only, I fear, to ever more tenebrous places. There is a sickness in the ancient, pitted cobbles of the old road. And on its writhing path, you will face viciousness, violence, and perhaps other damnably transcendent terrors. So steel yourself, and remember there can be no bravery without madness. The old road will take you to hell, but in that gaping abyss, we will find our redemption. So here we are in the tutorial that anyone familiar with Darkest Dungeon knows. Except Dismas and Reynold have been joined by Sonya the Shark and Ficos and Volpus. Which were left in the comments of the video that I made announcing this playthrough. And as you can see, Sonya, she's not in the best of shapes. So we're gonna heal her up a little bit with the food provided. And carry on with the tutorial. Run up these lanes. Keep to the side path. The For those of you just ahead. maybe not familiar with the game, it's a dungeon crawler. It's a roguelike permadeath dungeon crawler. Dispatch this thug in brutal fashion that all may hear of your arrival. And it's got turn-based combat. So, now that we're all on the same page, <laughs> the, uh, the general plan is going to be... Uh, right. Uh, the general plan is going to be to play through and modify the game as we go. So, just modifying the chase on, and uh, there's also dot .darkest files in the folders that are just fancier JSON, basically. So, human-readable and editable very easily editable. So I'm going to basically be going through and I'm going to try uh, Reynold, get you back to the front. Uh, yep. So I'm going to try to make the game interesting. <laughs> Even if you've seen Darkest Dungeon played before, you've never seen it like this. So probably, probably twice a month I'll be going through and making modifications to the game based on what I've done and what I've desired to uh, change. Should be fun. Any any suggestions in the comments will absolutely be, you know, considered during changing or while making the changes. And yeah, that's the whole that's the whole idea is we are going to go through play all the way through and have a blast doing it. So yeah, Darkest Dungeon 2 just came out, but I'm not really a fan of the carriage road trip gameplay loop. I just, I much prefer this. And I've never actually played since the developers finished the game, released it in 1.0, and the Darkest Dungeon was actually accessible. So it's going to be a mostly blind playthrough from... <laughs> I, uh... Yeah, I, I mostly just know what was in early access. I did play after the corpse uh, update. But for the most part, this is going to be blind. I have not seen nor fought a lot of the bosses and the ones that I did bite, or did fight. It was back a long, long time ago. But I did remember the tutorial chest was always trapped with blight, so I brought a key. Ah, it has trinkets. Cool. Also, yes. I did remove the downsides to the trinkets. I'll be going through as we play and rebalancing them as I see fit. Because, yeah, removing the downsides, uh, it gives more interesting decisions of what to 
bring along, and it also kind of made some just objectively terrible. So now the focus is going to be on making things challenging and rebalancing to my liking. And then at the end, if anyone cares, I'll probably find a way to make the edits available, whether it be through figuring out how to do mods or not. Welcome home. And I'll openly be talking about everything I've changed. This so hamlet, these corrupted lands, the roster size I increased now. in part and because I will not be getting rid of any heroes. Once the roster is full, it's full till somebody dies. And anyone who wants a character for the playthrough, toss them in the comments. I will be renaming and editing characters as we go. Fools and corpses. All will find and their yeah. way to us now that the road is clear. Like I said, it's going to be a kind of vanilla playthrough. Uh, we're not going to have like Crimson Cord or anything. So very basic, mostly just to reduce the amount of time it's going to take to get through it. But yeah, uh, changes twice a month, uh, two episodes a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays until I finish the game. And yeah, the the major change <laughs> the major change that I've made so far, uh, other than removing the downside to the trinkets, was just increasing the number of heroes are you know available. So the the network now gives more. Uh, I think it's just four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But uh, that's a lot of heroes. Mostly just so that if somebody wants a abomination or whatever, it doesn't take too long to get one. And then the roster size is also much, much larger. I think it goes up to 51 at present, but I can always go back and increase it later. So yeah. <laughs> um, other than that, I haven't really made any changes other than making all of the buildings available the from the outset. Once again. The forge so, stands ready to make weapons of war. Yeah. Mostly, mostly vanilla at the moment. Make no mistake. We will face ever greater threats. So what do I want to do to start off? We've got 6,300 gold. What do? What do? And the only person who has any stress is Ficos. Which is fine. So we have nothing we really need to do as far as sending people to treat. Promise solace to the weary and broken alike. But yeah, Trinkets so and charms as you can see, from all the forgotten there's actually the a reason to bring the move stone now because before there was a penalty that just was perpetual. Every fight you were going to have, I think it was a speed debuff, something like that. But now it's still it's actually useful. So. In the event that you do get hit by a move skill, you get the resist without just constantly being worse until it happens. Same with the, you know, different resist and things. But some of the stuff definitely is going to be too strong, like just 10% damage on melee skills all the time. Probably a little too strong, so I might have to go through and change that. But we're, we're going to see how things play for a couple episodes before I worry about compiling the total list and changing things again. Should be fun. Should be time, quite you fun. Know the tragic extent of my failings. All right, I think I've gone through and clicked all Most the things. Will end up here, covered in the poisoned earth. Ah, I uh, I did oblivion. not set the survivalist to the first week. It's fine. It's fine. All right, first things first. Um, I believe. I believe the cry havoc will be helpful. Not too worried. I mean, yeah, it's one of the really good abilities, but not too worried at present on that. And so far, I have not messed with any of the economic uh, anything. Yeah, I don't uh, don't really think I need to grab those. And I <laughs> I started off with a couple of my preferred classes. I just have always liked the Leper and the Hellion. And the Grave Robber. So I think the first mission after tutorial we're going to go with probably the other four. 
So arguably, I probably shouldn't have uh, wasted money on anyone else yet. But it's fine. Uh, Blight will be he helpful in the ruins. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with... Pick to the face is helpful if she ends up in the front, but Shadow Fade will get her back. So I think Throne Dagger is helpful. So we can rely on Shadow Fade to get her to the back. And then... Breakthrough is nice because it's forward. So it can help with repositioning. Oops. We got 3,000 left, so. <laughs> Chop, hue, uh huh. Yeah. And then Solemnity. Cool. And then the Vestal. Divine Grace, Mace Bash. And I think that about does it. Actually, Mace Bash could be helpful with the bonus damage to Unholy. All right. So we're going to go through the first dungeon crawl. Mecca of madness and morbidity. And after the first dungeon Your crawl, I'm going to call begins. it an episode and continue Thursday. All right. So... We've got an apprentice level short, explore 90% of rooms. And we'll drop off our starting crew and bring our new team. I do like the damage buff and accuracy. So that's the problem, I like all the things. Now, I could go through and change it so I can use more than four abilities, which is available through the JSON. Um, so I could actually make it so that's five or whatever. The Abomination, for example, I believe you start off with the ability to use all of them, and every class you can set a limit. So you can actually make it so that some classes have five and others have three, etc., etc. But for now, I think... Having having the ability to move forward is not super necessary in the ruins, I don't think. Again, it's been a long time, so I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, the breakthrough does give a damage debuff, but it does move her forward. So that's kind of very helpful. You know what, if she's not in the front, she's not going to be able to use Iron Swan. But she'll be able to use If It Bleeds and Wicked Hack no matter. There we go. Alright, and then our other frontliner. Chop, Q. Increased damage, increased crit, increased accuracy, but reduced dodge and increased damage taken. I think we're actually just going to use her primarily for tanking, at least for now. And then here, I definitely want Divine Comfort. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Just full-on heal bot. It should be a very easy mission. The cost of preparedness, measured now in gold, later in blood. Right. I forgot you have to actually pay for uh, provisions. Whoops. I could go back and sell the trinkets. Yeah, I completely forgot you have to pay for uh, provisions. Comple like, <laughs> completely forgot. Uh, how do you sell trinkets again? Trinkets. Um... But I kind of don't want to sell those, actually. You know what? It's fine. Starving's just a little bit of stress, and, um... 
A little bit of damage that we can heal. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be, uh... Item come up... <laughs> okay, so you can't sell the items that you get for free from bringing certain classes. And that is one thing that I'm kind of interested in doing, is making sure that every class has a thing that it brings. Because I believe the shovel just came from the Grave Robber, and the Medicinal Herbs... Maybe from the Vestal? Alright. Oh. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? No torches. Enough food for one food check. Oops. Yeah, if you're here for an optimal playthrough, you came to the wrong place. This is just an interesting playthrough. Okay, we at least have a torch. One torch. I didn't even look through our quirks. But hopefully it's fine. Uh, I also forgot to change her abilities. That's just him. Yeah, it's fine. Let's go against... Sure, him. Alright, so we've got Blight for two damage four rounds. And then we'll go ahead and smack him. Unfortunately, not enough. Just under. So we can either finish off... You know what? It's fine. Continually onslaught. The other Destroy one's blighted, so... There we go. Unfortunate. <laughs> Alright. It's fine. No big deal. We're just uh, building up some stress. Uh, it's not a. It's not a problem. The fiend falls. A faint hope building up some stress, taking some damage. It's fine. Yeah. Another shovel. How helpful. <laughs> Actually, it is very helpful. Okay. So we took no injury or uh, stress. Yeah, I know. So as the torch gets lower, uh, enemies are going to be stronger. We're going to be weaker, but we will get extra stuff, extra loot. So it's not all bad. Definitely want to take her down so she doesn't stress us out. Oops. Well, it's fine. She dies next time she takes a turn, so it's completely fine. Nice. With and leper being a leper. I actually think... The Hellion... Our Hellion has not acted yet. She has a speed of four. And the enemy Bone Rabble has a speed of one. So our Hellion will probably go first. So I think... You know, I'm actually even going to do the party heal, just in the case we got a crit. War can be we did not. Oh. But never hidden. I was wrong. <laughs> it's fine. Unforeseen. I didn't remember the Hellion acting. Well then. As victory it's fine. Right, so Everything's fine. Resistance. I'm having a blast, whatever. It's good. Everything's good. So... We only have to explore 90% of the rooms, which means we can skip one. And it might be a good idea to skip one if we don't have the food for a hunger check. And this is also dangerous because with pitch blackness, we could actually run into some very, very scary stuff. But we did get lucky and got the uh, surprise round. Despite it being dark. Yeah, I want her gone. Not enough, and we cannot actually target the front. Well, let's um Yeah, let's just let's just try to burn through them as fast as possible. And then heal on the second round. Because again, she's done for 
her next activation, she goes down. Alright. Now, we can't make the skeleton bleed. But we can blight him, so he's guaranteed to go down when it's his turn. Great is the weapon that cuts on okay. its own. And we're actually going to heal, which is also a stress heal. Slowly, gently. Okay. This is how And I we do indeed get to attack first, so nice. I would have definitely liked to get the Vestal this heal off there, but it's fine. Success. Key, extra stuff. A nice. Reward. I say what nice for performed. like very minimal reward. Well, at least we discovered the trap, so that's a chance for you know. I'm actually before I walk down this hallway, I'm gonna light the one torch we got. Since I just know there's, you know... Uh, yep, click it to disarm it. Or press W. Beautiful. And by disarming the trap, we got some more resolve back. So that's nice. Okay. There's another trap. Battle with a curio. You know what, let's go. We haven't gotten a hunger check yet, so closes in. maybe if we're lucky, the hearts of men. maybe if we're lucky, everything will be fine. And I am using default rules right now with the corpses and, um, I forget the other stuff that's like default, but you can turn off. Oh, right, uh, you can, <laughs> you can fail to run away, that's also a thing. Right. Sure. Their formation is broken. Maintain the offensive. And then might as well get a heal on herself while we finish him off. Hopefully next round our Vestal gets a chance to heal. Okay. Our Hellion will definitely finish him off. Or at the very least do enough for the uh for the, the blight to finish him off, so pop another heal. Again, just kind of fishing for crits to try to get stress heal as well. Alright. And then I forget what they do, but I'm going to literally activate every curio. Nice. Heal and stress heal. Beautiful. Yeah, the extra scouting is waste. <laughs> the 10% extra scouting ch chance is uh, quite quite a lot. Quite a lot, actually. Okay, Finding cool. Stuff is only and then the we go backwards, test. even though it's going to generate now some stress. Home. Eight stress. But less of a chance of a hunger check, since we didn't go all the way to the room and all the way back. I am very worried about running into an abomination, although I don't know. This is actually a scripted dungeon. I'm pretty sure. Or at least, like, partially scripted. Because, uh, yeah, the... Reynolds starts off with Kleptomaniac. And he usually automatically triggers guaranteed... Okay, we got plenty of food now. Cool. <laughs> there goes all of our concern about food. Now, if only we could find a torch. Beautiful. Beautiful. We're gonna hit the last room. Absolutely. We are in great shape so far, so. Uh, oh, actually, that's another thing I did modify, is I went and normally you do some stress healing if you're just idle in town. I removed that, because... Yeah, no. <laughs> With the larger roster, there would be no reason for me to, you know, just... Unless somebody did go crazy, there would be no reason for me to really stress heal anything minor. But now I do, because they will not heal on their own. I think it's actually worth... I think it's actually worth the, uh, the increase. Just take a round to buff.
Nice. And then, maybe, nope. Ringing ears. Yeah, our buffs don't really matter if uh, they don't hit the people we buffed with protection. There we go. So, we're gonna just try to burn through these guys. Give them no quarter. Get some work done. We do full heal whenever we go back to town, in case you're not familiar with Darkest Dungeon. So the health damage doesn't matter unless we hit Death's Door. At which point we all get... Everyone gets a whole bunch of stress. So I can heal 4 to 5 there. Okay, cool. As long as they keep focusing our protection buffed... Our protection buffed uh, leper, we are quite fine. Confidence surges as the enemy crumbles. Beautiful. And actually, blight is a really good way to burn through him. That's not good. As Death door. Ebbs, All right. Vistas of emptiness. Yep. Every time she gets hit. Every time she gets hit, she has a chance to die now. So, at this point, might as well just... Yeah, so she has the permanent debuffs. That's another thing that you can actually disable through the in-game options. I think I'm actually going to stress heal the leper. I know it's a little reckless because the enemies are not anywhere close to death, but it's fine. She'd only be able to hit the tanky guy anyway. Yep. Yep. So now only... Huh. Only the Blight from the Grave Robber and the... Yeah. And <laughs> the Vestal are able to reach him, so... Probably just try to burn through him. Yep, might as well keep... Nice, crit. Extra stress heal. Yeah, this dude's gonna be a problem. Well, not if he attacks our tank. Okay, so he should... Yeah, next turn, he's gone. Which means we can just heal. Or he's just gone. <laughs> cool. Unfortunately, we don't have another key. Uh, I do not want to open it with her. Her. Yeah, let's open it with her. And that's why. Alright, cool. So we got the move stone, some crests, and some gold. Nice. At least now we know, or now I've been reminded that you have to pay for provisions, so that's cool. Yep. I can still right. see their angry faces as they stormed the manor. So, but I was dead before they found me. And the so was we've got uh, Reynold and Dismiss are not going to be renamed. They are the default characters for the game, so they're going to stay. Obviously, Sonya and Fikos are named, but if you want the Grave Robber, the Hellion, the Leper, or the Vestal, or the other leper, the Hellion, the Plague Doctor, or the Arbalist, which I had no, I had nothing to do with any of them. But uh, yeah, toss it in the comment, and on Thursday, whenever I jump back in, I'm, I'm going to try to, well, for Thursday's episode, which I'll be recording Wednesday evening, I'm going to, I'm going to try to delay recording them until the last minute, just so that anyone who drops a comment saying, "Hey, I want the whatever," won't have to wait too long to see how, you know, to to see it happen. And to see if their character dies on the first quest they go on. But yep. Yeah. So there we have it. That's been your episode of Darkest Dungeon for the day. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, have a good one.